Good grief, this is exciting, isn't it? Gonna file our saw, get our saw sharp. I've been wanting to use this for a long time, but it just hasn't been very sharp. So one interesting thing here is, so as we were looking at this, remember when we showed this tooth detail on the electron microscope that we had high, low, high, low teeth? I thought that that was filed incorrectly, but many of you who know much more about it than I do say, no, that's not necessarily the case. It could have, it could have come that way. I'm not going to file it that way because I don't know how I would. That would be difficult to duplicate, and I don't know that that is the best way. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to joint it. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take a file, and we're going to a flat file, and knock down the top of these till we hit every single tooth. So they're exa all exactly the same height. That gives us a starting point. That'll give us, that's why lighting is so important when we're filing saws is uh, we need, need to be able to see the light refracting off of that point and filing to it. So let's do a little test cut first. I'll show you how this one cuts and we'll put it up against, this is, I don't think I've shown you this saw. This is my new, this was my Christmas present from Mrs. W. My Veritas 14 TPI rip saw. Beautiful saw. Man, what a good value these things are for what you get. Beautiful, beautiful saws. I think for the money, I mean, you can pay a whole lot more than these. I don't think these are, you can get them for under $70. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's a lifetime saw. It's a saw that you can sharpen, and it's a beautiful, beautifully sharp saw. Very well made. Look at the brass. Isn't that nice? So let's do a little cut, and we'll see, hopefully, <laughs> we'll see how it cuts now. Hopefully it cuts better when I'm done, but stay, it is my first time, so we'll do the best we can. All right, so for our test, we're going to go with a, the D there for the Distin and the V here for the Veritas. This is a piece of three quarter inch, beautiful CVG fur. My favorite. I was almost gonna say my fair city. And we'll start with the, with the Distin. All right, let's see how it cuts. Now what we're looking for, this is a back saw. This is a saw we're gonna wanna use for our fine woodworking. So it should, we don't want one that tears out, but cuts nice and cleanly. Doesn't cut too bad. Uh, it's, it's wedged in the kerf now. That tells me that there's not a lot of set in the teeth. If you don't know what that means, stay tuned. We'll cover that, cover that soon. All right, so the Veritas, and this is a 14, TPR, 14 teeth per inch, 14 teeth every inch, and this is a rip pattern but we'll see how it cross cuts here. Cuts all the way down to the back. So what that tells us is that has a, it does indeed have some set in it. So what do you have here? You know, it's, you know, that doesn't, that distant doesn't cut as bad as I thought it did. Let's try one more. Little bit more tear out on it. I put as much effort as I did into the, into the Veritas. Let's go with the Veritas. What I did the first time is I cut pretty light with a Distin and I cut pretty heavy, hard, a lot of force with the Veritas. Then I cut heavy with the Distin. Now we'll cut light with the, yeah, I know it's confusing. that tells us, if it tells us anything, but Veritas does cut a little bit, certainly cuts a little bit cleaner. So depending on the way you're gonna hold your saw, you can, you may be able to leave the handles on. I am going to take the handles. The screwdriver's too big. But those are small little holes. I'm gonna take the handle off so we can get all the teeth. Beautiful, look at those brass, solid brass screws. Boy, this is a beautiful saw. Should be able to poke these out here. It's a little bit large there.
So nice to have a handle that's in good condition like that type of condition. Look at the medallion. That's really special there, isn't it? Distin. So I try to get in the habit of uh, putting hardware back. Which way did it go now? Putting the hardware back in things that I take apart so I don't lose it. It's so easy to kick something or knock it off a bench and it's forever gone. And things like this, how do you replace something like that? So we'll set that aside, take care of it. Now we're ready to do some sharpening. So this is a trick that I learned from the Lee Nielsen website. I hadn't thought of this. We, I, I used to use this stuff. I think I mentioned it in the last video. We used to call it, I think we called it Prussian blue. This is steel blue layout. So machinists, when they're doing layout on a piece of steel, you know, it's not like wood where you can draw on it really very well with a pencil. They'll use this blue. Now look at that. I've got it all over my fingers. You put this blue across there, etch it on there, and what it's going to do, you know, it didn't really, I, I don't need it all on the side like that. That wasn't very smart, but I basically just went on the top of the teeth. So if you use this stuff here, you'll see why here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give us a contrast when we're doing our filing. And I might even start using this stuff on, uh, I hope that stuff comes off. Yeah, it looks like it comes off, okay. As a contrast to our file. So we got that all coated nice there on that with that blue. Okay, so with the little mounting block that we used, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use my fancy saw holder. I'll use this just like you guys, most of you are gonna be using it. We'll mount our blade in here. So how deep do we set our teeth there in our jig? I'd, I'm not sure. Let's start with this. I want it pretty shallow. This is a pretty heavy duty blade, pretty thick chunk of steel. So it's going to be fairly rigid, but I've got that thing sticking up there, or maybe 3 sixteenths or so. We'll adjust it if need be. So I think we can put it in our vise just like this. All right, so where we want to start, just like all saws, whether it be a cross-cut saw, uh, is we're going to join it. We're going to get some uniformity in those teeth. We're going to take our file here. We're going to go right along the top. And we're going to watch carefully. We want to make sure that we're touching the top of every tooth. And if you have long teeth and short teeth, now, if you've got a tooth that's, that's way down there, maybe one that's broken or damaged, I'm not going to joint all the way down to that. But I am going to keep jointing until I touch the tops of the majority of the teeth. So the camera lens that I'm using is not working out very good for the macro view, but I got you guys, got you guys covered. I got a new lens here. This one, this 2470 has got a macro feature. Check it out. So if we flip this and rotate the focus, locks out there. Now we can shoot macro so I can bring you close up there. So I think this will, we'll try it out, see how it looks. I think it'll be a lot better. All right, is that better? How's that? Boy, this, the macro is hard to shoot here. Okay, so what you might see here, hopefully you can see, is we've got uneven teeth height, height right there. And if you look on the top, you should start to see some of that blue wearing off there. And I've skimmed across the top and I can see that every other tooth, all the high teeth are showing, but not the low teeth. So that means I need to continue to joint down. So we'll joint down a little bit further until we pick up those teeth and we're going to reprofile this, or I'm going to attempt to, uh, with teeth all the same height. So the poor man saw holder, although it would work, it put me at a really uncomfortable off working position. I didn't like working down that low and I can't see very well. I like this one better because it brings the saw up here at chest level where I can work on it. So normally you're not going to have to joint a saw. Uh, like when I do a cross cut saws, I'm going to only get to have to joint them 
pretty lightly if it's a saw that I've filed and maintained myself. If it's a saw that hasn't been sharpened or been sharpened incorrectly, it'll have to, sometimes it'll take a tremendous amount of jointing. Here is a jointer that I use for a crosscut saw with the with a portion of it removed because I don't need to, to joint the radius. But this is a this is a better way than doing it by hand because when we do it by hand, one thing I, I notice is you, you get a lot of this going on. It's kind of hard to, to hold it and you can't put a lot of weight on it and you run the risk of putting your hand into the saw as well. What's nice about a jointer, here's a, here's a big one. I mean, you, you're not gonna use one like this. You're never gonna find a jointer like this here. Uh, but what it does is you can see it, it holds, it's got, holds itself against the uh, side of the, the blade. So you file squarely, holds the file securely. It gives you the handle to hold on. You can really joint well. One thing you will be able to find that is relatively common are the short, short joiners, like this one right here. So this is, uh, maybe you even have one of these around. This is a short joiner. This, would, this is a combination tool. It's a raker gauge. Again, it's a cross-cut saw tool, but what it, it's also designed to hold a file in this position like this. So you can tighten that set screw right there, put a piece of file on there, and you can joint like this. Again, you're seeing that the, the framework holds it nice and evenly on the saw. Again, not needed, but very nice. So because these teeth are so short, so I'm still looking at these and I'm still not down to them, I'm gonna just very carefully continue to joint. Much better. And I'm starting to see this really works good. I'm starting to see, here, I'll bring you over the camera over. There you go. Now we can really see better. That's a pretty lens there, isn't it? Well, that is a nice lens. So still you can see that we still have a couple of low teeth. Not too many. I could see one right there. Yeah, it's still the low teeth. So we'll join it a couple more times. Take your time. We don't want to join. The more we join, the more work we have to do for filing our teeth. Still there. That blue, the blue color or the blue dye really helps to highlight where the file has been. Still right there. Can you see that one? We got there. We got one, two, three, four, five. The six tooth in right there. Still below. Still got the blue on it. One more time. File's cutting good now. One more time. Light pressure. Almost there, I think. So I hope you can see that there. So, sorry for the, I seem to have a shallow depth of field there. But I've checked every tooth now and we can see that every tooth has been touched by the jointer. We have essentially all of the teeth are at the same height. They're all flat on the top. Now we're ready to start filing.